today's video is one that I am really excited for. We saw how much you enjoyed the last coaching video that we filmed with Louis. So we brought Louis back onto the channel today to run another coaching session specifically on body positioning. This video is also sponsored by AG1, which we're super excited about, but I'll talk more about that a little bit later in the video. For now, we're gonna pass on to Nathan and Louis to run through our body positioning coaching session. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on Hannah Morris Bouldering. I'm Nathan and I'm joined today by Louis. Very tall Louis, hello, how you doing folks? From the Catalyst climbing team. Yep. Um, I see you're here today with uh, the full Catalyst team. Yep, I'm at my normal height. No, don't pan down. actually <laughs> <laughs> fine. Was it fine? <laughs> He's very strong. <laughs> right, now, oh, this is why I had Cut Sam. Two. Look at this. <laughs> today we are doing a coaching concept with Louis. Um, we've drafted you in to give us some guidance, Hannah and myself, on hip positioning on the wall. Um, do you want to give us a quick run through of what we're going to be looking at today? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, uh, I'm really excited about this because I, I teach this sort of stuff all the time in my own sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly as Nathan says, the exact position you put your hips when you're doing certain moves can be the difference between making it really, really hard or a lot, lot easier. So yeah, we've got three examples to look at. We're going to look at a rockover move. We're going to look at a standard dyno and how we generate momentum using our hips. And we're going to look at a cut loose move, which is obviously my favorite thing, but I actually think there's a lot more technique that goes into cutting loose efficiently, yep. uh, which I'd like to share a little bit of. Yeah, so it was uh, only a matter of time before we got you in on a cut loose Yeah, move. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get started. Let's go look at the first example. Let's do it. I think the really cool thing about us doing a hip and kind of body positioning type coaching session is that it doesn't rely on you going away and getting stronger. Simply by changing way, the way we position our hips and body on the wall, we can actually make climbs easier, like almost instantly, right? Yeah, instantly. Yeah, that's, that's instantly. exactly what we're doing. Yeah. So, okay, uh, I thought we'd take a look at a rockover example first. Okay. And I thought I'm gonna try and teach with questions. I'm gonna demonstrate the common mistake I see a lot of climbers making when trying to do, in this instance, a rockover move. I'll demonstrate it, then you see if you can tell me what looks bad about it. Okay. We'll talk and see if you can guess what sort of things I could do to try and make it a bit easier. Mm -hmm. And then I'll try and demonstrate the good version and then learn that. Sure. <laughs> My stupid glasses, there we go. <laughs> okay, it worked. Okay. But is there anything about that that looked a little bit less pleasant than it could have? It looked quite... I want to say arm heavy yeah. in the movements, but I wonder if that's a lack of something happening in the lower body. Like maybe oh, it looked yeah. like you were moving your arms and your lower body was kind of frozen. Yes, perfect, perfect answer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it was too army and not enough hippie. <laughs> okay. um, so let's make it less army and more, more hippie. Yeah, um, so yeah, common mistake that I see people make when they're doing a rock over move like this is that they'll pull the hole to their chest as uh, multiple issues with that. One is that it actually makes it harder to reach the next hold because although you've got closer to it at first by pulling up to the chest, yeah. you now release and reach out and now you're holding all the weight on one arm. Yeah. That's extra hard because because you're all the way up here, you haven't really put the weight in the foot, you're actually just holding it up into your chest. Yeah. So, okay, well, perfect answer so far. Nathan, yeah. what, what do you think we'd do to solve that? So it's interesting because you had your right foot on the hold out right, yeah. so that would suggest you were kind of transitioning some weight to your foot, but I wonder if is a way of getting more yeah. weight over that foot. And yeah. I'm guessing, based on the theme of today's video, it's gonna be in the hips. With the hips, yeah, that's exactly it. So, specific thing I've practiced, which has made most rockovers I come across loads easier, is don't think about the next handhold at all. Okay. Think about going as far over with the hips as you possibly can. I usually okay. look at my knee okay. and just follow that and try and send it as far to the side as I can. Only after I've gone as far as I possibly can do I then look up and try and get the handhold. Okay. What works nicely on this is you'll see, I'll demonstrate it first where I'm like, okay, look, here's the nice hip position and it is much easier to get the first hold, but actually it makes it just as easy to skip out the middle one and go all the way for the next one. Oh, really? So I'll show it quickly and then you try as well. Ah. So I can get this one, but wow. I can also get that one. And then same for the last move. Oh, wow. Okay. You really have smooth. a try as well, Nathan. That was really smooth. So before we dive into the session in full and get into the tips, I wanted to carve out a little bit of space to talk about the sponsor of this video. Since we have been drinking and talking about AG1 in our videos, I've put like a lot of friends, a lot of family onto it. People are interested in it. 
uh, want to try it for themselves. So if you want to try it for yourself, you can head into the description of this video. AG1 is a complete nutritional supplement with 70 high quality ingredients that help to supplement a healthy lifestyle. Nathan and I use it a lot when we're in the van. It's one scoop per day, have it in the morning, and I personally feel like it just sets a really nice intention for the rest of the day. I personally think investing in your health is one of the most important things you can do and I've had a little bit of a perspective shift in the last year or so uh, where I'm like hang on I like invest in things like my gym membership, I invest in things like climbing training plans, why would I not invest in something that was going to supplement my health. AG1 has your daily dose of vitamin C and zinc to support immune health and plant extracts to promote mental clarity and better focus overall, which we enjoy. AG1 are also offering members of the Hannah Morris Bouldering community a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free travel packs when you make your first order. So I noticed that you dropped the other leg yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. And is that because it's easier to shift the hips that, if you, this leg is off the wall. That's exactly it. It's, uh, I don't know if it's about it being off the wall. It's more about if I flag under that way, that okay. naturally draws my hips Pulls in as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to see it that. once more before you go for it? Yeah, I'll also say this is a kind of insane way to climb this climb. I'd probably only do this technique this way if the climb was harder. I'll go for it, I'll go for okay, it. Perfect. Yeah. Nice, man. And then try for the last move as well. So hip foot all the way up. Really nice, man. Nice. Give it, give it one more run. I just want to see how much of an effect that foot going all the way under actually has. Nice. And do I do it on this one too? So your other yeah. leg is actually coming yeah, the all the way Yeah, the first thing I'm doing is sticking the other leg underneath. I'd be interested to watch mine back, but I'm guessing I wasn't doing that as much. No, you were doing... Um, foot stays behind, just smears your way up. Yeah, yeah. Which still worked, but it meant you're almost going like diagonally through that position, whereas yeah. I'm aiming to go all the way across, all the way up. I don't think my method is right and yours is wrong, by the way. It's just that I think mine works better if more extreme examples of this move. Yeah. But if that hold was worse, or if we're having to go further, and you're basically doing like a, almost a mantle version of this, yeah, yeah. then the method we're learning will work a little bit better. Cool. Uh, one more try and then we'll move on. Keep, uh, sl after you slide the left leg under, Focus on the right knee, going as far out into it as you can. You almost get into like a no hands position before you reach with the hands. Nice, yeah. Yeah, man, not bad at all. Okay, it was, it was getting there. And try for the last move as well. Really nice, Nate. That's definitely not something I naturally do, you which would is have interesting to think about. Why do you think you would have to do that less frequently than other climbers? My height. Yeah. Taller <laughs> climbers have to practice rockovers less um, because, yeah, exactly as you say, you can usually put your foot onto it and probably just reach Nine the next one. Nine times out of ten, yeah. a little bit of rockover yeah. is all we'll I Yeah, do need. it. Yeah, exactly. Whereas <laughs> a shorter climber, like, yeah, okay, imagine they're nowhere near reaching that left one. I think you could reach that first hold with your foot still there. Yeah. If they were only tall enough to get it after they got all the way onto there, yeah. then I think that sliding across method would make more sense. Yeah. That's interesting how much it like, challenged yeah. my brain to sink that far into a rock over. Yeah. Because it's probably not always in the, like, you know, yeah, that, that library of movement that I would do in a normal session. Yeah, exactly. We'll move on to the next one. Keep it running. So now we're over at the steepest wall in here, I'm going to say. Yep. It's, yeah, it's got to be uh, like 50, 50 degrees or so, and it goes on a long way. Um, so what have you got in store for us on the I, steep wall? I thought we'd look at cutting loose. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think, okay, yeah, cutting loose and letting your feet come off the wall and swinging is somewhat strength dependent. But again, I think there's a specific trick to it, which we can use to make it less straight dependent. Okay. So I'll just demonstrate the first move of this res twice. And again, you play spot the difference and tell me what you see. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, I'm acting a little bit, but... <laughs> Let's see that one one more time. Yeah, yeah. You like the acting? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. And then the other option. Yeah. Okay. What difference do you see? So that feels a little bit trickier to me to see a difference in. I know on the first one, your legs definitely swung out a lot more. Yeah. Which I could see made the left hand get worse. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. falling off. You're on the right lines, go on, um, carry on. And then the second better way of doing it, you're, I'm guessing it, it's, it's coming from your hips, right? Your hips were coming less far out from the wall? Yeah, perfect. Is that roughly That's right? That's exactly it, yeah. Okay. So, okay, I'm acting slightly on this move because I think probably the best way to do it would be just make sure your foot doesn't come off. That'd be loads better. But I'm imagining if this hold was worse or a bit further and I was forced to do that jump move, the first way felt hard because I tried to keep the foot on for as long as possible. Then as I caught it, the foot slipped. And then I found myself in this position where I was like, oh, I've got the holds, but my hips and my legs are all the way out here. And that violent swing out is then what takes me off the holds. Yep. In the second example, I was jumping into the dead point of that move. So as I jumped, I was already taking my feet and my hips off and I was expecting to land in exactly that position. Yeah. So I mean, I still had a bit of force catching those holds, but there was no violent swing outwards sure. to whip me off the holds. Do you want to so, see those two so, again? So both methods, there's no difference in the beta that you're using. No, just a it's, subtle change in where I'm jumping to. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, I'd describe it as in the first one, I'm just jumping with the hands and then my body's ripping me off. Yeah. And in the second one, I'm jumping with my whole body into a specific shape. Sure, okay. Yeah. But it's interesting how you can get so much difference in the movement. Yeah. You're not using different holds. Yeah. Um, or even in a different order. You're just thinking about your where your body is in space. You're a very good student, you right? You're a very, very good student. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it, man. So I'll show you them both again. Then you want to have a try? Yes, I'd okay. like to have a try. So option one again. And then option two. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah I see there how you're, you jumped with your body. Yeah. So I almost want to say that on the second go, when you caught the right hand, yeah. your hips were already a bit underneath yeah, it. Yeah, that's exactly it. Whereas on the first go, because your hips stayed in their original place, you catch that hand and then you kind of pendulum underneath it. So I really saw that. I picked that up the second time you saw it, not the first time. Um, He's totally understood it. He's got it. But yeah, I, now, I, saw, now do it. It. I saw it that time. Yeah, now, now I've got to give it a go. That's tricky. Nice. Nice, okay. I still felt, I think I had more swing than you did. Yeah, uh, um, you are taller, so you would naturally. Okay. I think I, I would like to have one more go. I think I can think more about, because that was my first time yeah, going yeah. to Boulder, you're, half your brain's still just thinking about trying to do the move. Yeah. Um, I think I could focus on visualizing how your hips were yeah. already out from the wall when you grabbed the hold and, and maybe do it with even less yeah. swing. Really good, man. Go on, let's see. Nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. really nice, like really, really nice. I think the only other thing I'd recommend is just jump into that position and try and memorize this shape. Okay. And then you're trying to jump to land in that shape. Yeah. I think my, uh, my right foot leaves the hold. It would be different because we're different heights, but I think yeah. my foot leaves the hold before I make contact with the right hand. Okay. Yeah, okay, but hips want to be like roughly in this. Yeah, that's it. It's a shame you can't like 3D little chalk dab where you I know, right? <laughs> exactly the position. <laughs> we could just put a cloud of chalk where yeah. your hips need to be. Here. Okay, so I'm memorizing this that space position, roughly yeah. here. I'm going to try and put my hips there. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, not really far nice. off. Not far really off. Really nice. So yeah, like, something I was going to ask you on, yeah, on, on these kind of moves, and I've got to quiz you because yeah. of your, your historic cut looseness, cut loose, <laughs> cut, cut loose fame. I think people would often see a cut loose as being an uncontrolled move. Yeah. But it's interesting when you're breaking it down almost as a technique to learn here, it feels like actually 
it's a controlled move. Yeah. Uh, would you say cut loose is uncontrolled or controlled? Do you think you can kind of tame the yes, the, tame the wild beast as it were? I mean, this, like? this is why I do so much practice with dynamic movements. I think I think momentum and dynamic moves gets a bad rep in climbing. I was like, no, it's an uncontrolled way of climbing. But moving at speed doesn't mean uncontrolled. If you've practiced it and you've learned all the subtleties to it, then it's just a different type of control. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, for sure. Only other one that might be worth looking at is um, the move on this yellow. Just so I'm conscious of like, oh, when we're trying it on this red, we could do it a bunch of different ways. Sure. And it doesn't really feel like it makes a difference. There's a move on this yellow, which I think is actually a really good example of okay. landing in that like neutral position. Sure. Um, so that's a hard got... grade. You have to cut loose. Yeah, exactly. Like now on we've this got one, to really test it. <laughs> if again, I just think slightly. If we ignore this foothold, then that leaves us with jump from these two to this big sloper. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if I leave my feet behind me, it might still go, but it'll be a lot harder. And then if I let the feet come out a little bit more, it's a lot nicer. Let's just have a check. <laughs> yeah, okay, that is a lot harder, okay. okay. And then with the hips coming out. Yeah, that felt like a different move. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Worth see the try. control there. So I had that little toe hook on the left. Left foot toe hook, okay. First time I just jumped as if the only thing I was thinking about was just hitting the handhold. Okay. And then the swing, that well, was enough that it ripped me off the left hand. Yeah. And then I wasn't quite strong enough to just hold on the right. And then the second time jumped just straight into that hanging position, it felt loads better. So you couldn't hold that with that? If you just May let your swing Maybe go, I could, but it's a different grade. Right. Go on. Oh, yeah, well, okay. you are. Okay. Go on, try it again. So I was going to say, I think that is a cut loose move that is probably about my limit. I mean, that's, that's maybe, maybe in a few goes, if I can genuinely get that hip positioning, it would be solid. Yeah. Right now, that feels like it's just on the edge of out of control. But then that's what's nice, is like perfectly going back to your first point at the start of this video of, oh, exact positioning of the hips can mean we don't have to get any stronger, but we can still do harder moves. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think you need to get stronger to do this move. Like you almost held it, and that was the hard version with the hips like ripping you off afterwards. Yeah. I think if you landed in just the right spot, actually that might go to actually feel like a pretty gentle move. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll give it a few more goes. Let's see what happens. So it was kind of easy for me to think about on the red because the level was slightly below my grade. On this one, that attempt there was just me kind of trying to stick the move. Yeah. It feels a lot harder to position the hips in advance on a harder move. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything in particular that, what would be the best thing to focus on? I've got two suggestions. One is something that you did already on this uh, red climb, which is just jump and feel what the whole holding position is actually like. That like you, I think, yeah, oh, okay, well I can, so you definitely can. Yeah. You can reach that from the floor. Yeah, yeah, I can Just jump. jump up and hold that position. Sure. Uh, the other one is actually, again, what we talked about on the red climb, the first thing that I do when I'm launching for it and wanting to get that good position is letting the foot come off first okay. and then doing the move. Yeah, okay. Whereas I think you're trying to keep it on for as long as I'm possible. I'm trying to keep it on to make this position easier, yeah. but then I'm, it's, it's exactly. causing me a problem. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sweet. Okay, that feels, <laughs> that feels like If you landed exactly hold. there, yeah. <laughs> then you're good. If I didn't swing, yeah, that, yeah. that's the completely. But that's what we're aiming for, eliminating that swing by just moving the feet at a slightly different timing. Oh, oh, I thought you had closer, it. Yeah, that was closer. so good. Okay, it's kind of like letting the hips come out as much as I can get away with. Yeah. Before having to then be like, now I need something else. Weirdly, this is where campusing eventually might end up being more efficient. If your hips were already here, right, and then you just went oh like yeah, that. Okay. This is why campusing sometimes does feel easier because yeah, you don't have to deal with the outward swing from the yeah, hips. Yeah, that just makes sense. I'm not necessarily going to recommend just campusing that move. <laughs> I will try it in a minute. Sounds like you're definitely. I'm recommending kind of recommending it. it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. Okay, nice. That was gorgeous. Go on. Yeah, left heel all the way over. Go on. Yeah, man. Go on, big flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go once and again. Come on. Yeah. Well, I'm in. Oh, no. It's rubbish. <laughs> it's not rubbish. <laughs> it's good. You missed a good bit. <laughs> I missed it. Oh, man. Great okay. effort. Okay. For you. Thanks. How? Good work okay. on that catch. How did it feel that time? Just different. Yeah. Like, yeah, different and, and, and possible. Excellent, oh, great. man. Yeah. Really nice. <laughs> oh, great work, really cool. Let's see you again. Pow. Okay. I'm going to have a go on that. I think you should, man. You'll do the whole thing. <laughs> uh, I'll try this black one, then you try the, the yellow? Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> 
Although we, actually, we I don't think this black one has any exciting coaching videos on it. So a quick, a quick, uh, a quick siege. Nice, Louis. Nice, come on. We want to see a cut loose. Yeah, come on. Oh no! Oh. 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 I'll try again. Good effort. <laughs> nice work. It didn't quite go far back enough. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like you hit, just hit like a flat. Yeah. No, there's a much better hold there, and I just missed it. Yeah. Oh, uh, you go for yours. I'll go for this one again in a sec. Yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah! So good. Come on. Yeah, man. <laughs> Big flag. Yeah, get it. Yeah, 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 man. Oh, everyone's applauding. Okay. Wow. Good effort, man. Wow. Yeah, just need a moment. Yes, Louis, come on. Nice. Hey, love that. Hey, Very we nice, both did mate. it. Yeah, that was awesome. Yay. That's a little bit of coaching. A little bit of smashing. Bit of climbing. <laughs> uh, right. Well done, man. Great work. Yeah, that was great. A couple of really interesting tips, and we just kind of ended up <laughs> seeing, where the, hip movement, and it seeing where the hip movement took us. Dino time. Let's wait, team. Uh, I thought we'd take a look at the role of our hips when it comes to generating momentum for a dyno. Um, so I have behind us a nice easy dyno. Um, again, Nathan's going to have to like practice some specific stuff. So I'm pretty sure you can just stand there and grab that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't do that. Okay. Um, again, I'll demonstrate the common mistake I see uh, less experienced climbers make, and then I'll demonstrate what I think could be done better. You see if you can spot the difference. I don't know how obvious it is. Go on, what are you seeing? Momentum generation, Yeah. you mentioned. There was a lot more what I would just like describe as like elastic band in yeah. the good version. Yeah. So more kind of like creating a spring. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's pretty give, much it. Maybe I'll give it a go yeah, and yeah. you can see if there's anything to be fine tuned. Perfect, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, man. So um, you spotted the difference perfectly. In the first example though, I was staying really close to the wall and that meant as I stood up, I'm already falling away a little bit and my time balanced on this hold is a lot shorter sure. when it yeah, comes yeah, to catching yeah. the hold. And then yeah, exactly as you did on the second one, you'd do this beautifully actually, having my hips starting out here means I still get all of that upward momentum, but with my hips coming in that way, I also get loads of inward momentum. Yeah. So I think we can make the difference even more obvious if we try to leave a longer pause before you touch that hold. So okay. instead of standing up and grabbing it straight away, see if you can stand up and balance for a moment and then catch it. Try that once more. Sure. So it's like a timing thing almost. Yeah, of exactly. Giving ourselves time stood over this whole yeah, thing going from out to in. That's exactly it. And other way of thinking about it would be uh, either leaving a bit of a pause before you go for it, or just trying to work out what's the most gentle you can be when catching that hold. Okay. I'll caress it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Hey, and the foot stayed on that time. Once more. Not too bad. Really nice. Really, really nice. Cool. So yeah, if um, if the hold was worse or just a smaller target to catch, 
having more time in that balance position would be really, really essential. In this example, you can do whatever you want. We're sure. tall and we're strong, we can grab a great big jug. Yeah. But like I say, if the hold's worse, having more time so you can slow down and get it more carefully can often be the difference between finding the move really easy and doing it every time or not even being close to doing it. Sure. Really, yeah, really yeah. good, man. Really good. Thanks. I think it's really great to have done kind of practicing hip positions at different grades. And it's something that you can clearly work on at any grade. But when it gets to the harder stuff, maybe without even realizing it, as Louis just pointed out to me, um, on this yellow, for example, you know, there's a rock over in there at the top, hip positioning, shifting over the toes in order to reach for the last hold. Yeah. There was the cut loose that we applied straight after working on the red. Yeah. Um, so you can really see how working on those they feel like quite fundamental movements on any kind of hold. Yeah. They all kind of play into when you're trying harder stuff. Yeah, exactly. I think kind of like I was saying on that purple climb, like the uh, over-exaggerated way I was doing those moves is not really relevant on that purple climb, but then it is kind of what we need to do on the much harder version. Yeah. And that's usually what I practice on easy grades. I imagine if I over-exaggerate all the moves I'm doing, it is just how they would look when I'm doing them at the extremes on harder climbs. Mm -hmm. So. Man, good learning today, Nathan. Very thank you nice very walk. much. Yeah, that was a great, uh, great power hour we've had. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Um, don't forget to go and subscribe to the Catalyst Climbing YouTube channel. Subscribe to Hannah Morris Bouldering, and we'll see you all in our next video. Bye.